Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures, and I've got a little project today that I'm working on in the driveway on our trailer. Our, our Conqueror UEV 490 came with two 100 amp hour batteries, so 200 amp hours worth of battery storage in, in, the, in the Conqueror, which sounds fantastic. I've got 200 amp hours worth of battery in the back of my Gladiator that I use to run all the things back here. And since, you know, we're running pretty much the same things in the Conqueror, it, it sounds like it would be fantastic. Uh, but there's been one major issue that we've been having with these. And so we're going to switch these out with uh, this new battery from Renogy. But the main issue is, this is a lead acid AGM battery, which is very common, very popular. Um, but when you're talking energy storage for your rigs, for your trailers, for your overland travels, van life, whatever, there's some major downsides to going with an AGM lead acid battery versus this one, which is a lithium iron phosphate or LIFO4 as it's uh, abbreviated. So I thought I would make this video and just kind of go through the differences between these two battery types and why, in my opinion, and why I am switching from the lead acid AGM to the lithium iron phosphate. Because if you are, are, are doing this overlanding, van life, whatever, off-grid living thing, there's some significant differences here. So let's start with my main issue with this, with, with the AGM lead acid batteries. The biggest thing for us is the fact that as this drains in power, voltage drops on this. So, you know, it's a 12.8 voltage battery, they both are. Um, when they're fully charged, they're both kicking out, you know, a little over 14 volts. But as this is used, this one drops in voltage and it will get pretty low, below 12 into the 11s, even into the 10s and 9s um, voltage as this drains down. And when you are running things like a fridge, they are very voltage dependent. When you're running things like a diesel heater, they are very voltage dependent. Um, so some things aren't so much, but these are the things that we use daily, regularly depend on, on our trips. And so having a battery that the voltage is dropping means we can't use our fridge. What prompted this is when we have been out on just weekends and using our two 100 amp hour batteries, well, I mean, before the weekend's over, our, my fridge is cutting off because the voltage has dropped enough that the fridge will not run anymore. And that's, that's not good. Uh, we had an issue this past weekend where we were running the diesel heater and I couldn't get it to start because the voltage in the batteries had dropped enough that it wouldn't maintain the voltage needed for the diesel heater to start. And it was a cold weekend, so we needed that diesel heater to run. Um, so, the met, to, to me, the major advantage to a lithium iron phosphate battery is there's no voltage drop, or excuse me, there is voltage drop, but it's very minimal. You're not gonna get a low enough voltage drop in this for my fridge not to run, for my diesel heater not to start. And that's a huge deal. And so what that means is with a lead acid AGM battery, you can't use all the power that's stored in there because it's, it gets to a point where it's no longer usable. Uh, so it's, it's really a waste. Now, a lot of people balk at the price of lithium iron phosphate batteries because they are significantly more expensive than a lead acid AGM battery. These can be had anywhere from, you know, 150 to 300, $400, depending on the, the brand and the, you know, the quality of the battery. And these can be had for, you know, 
$500 to upwards of $1,000, also depending on the brand. This particular one uh, costs $690. This battery, um, I did some research online, this battery runs $290. So you're thinking, why would I buy, I mean, I could buy two of these for the price of one of these. Well, yeah, you can, but one of these will provide you more power than two of these. Usable power, like realistic usable power. So uh, let's walk through the, the pros and cons. I'll just go, kind of go down a list of the pros and cons uh, and tell you in the end actually how this is the more affordable battery. So a, a battery is rated in life cycles. So how many times can you discharge and recharge this battery before its performance is impacted. Now, usually they say that, that especially for lithium batteries, they say that's to 80% capacity. So how many charges can you go from, from zero to 100 and recharge it before the capacity is diminished and this battery is now holding only 80% of its capacity? So at that point, this would be an 80 amp hour battery, not a 100 amp hour battery. And for most AGM batteries, they range, but you're gonna expect anywhere from, they say 200, to 800 cycles. So the average is usually 500 cycles is the expected lifespan of an AGM battery. That, that's not a lot. The expected lifespan of a battery like this, 4,000 cycles. So 500 cycles, 4,000 cycles. That is a huge, massive difference in the life expectancy of this battery, which they usually say 10 years. Uh, this has a five-year warranty on it. And they usually say two to three years for an AGM battery. And they typically come with a one to two-year warranty max, usually a one-year warranty. This one has a one-year warranty on it. And this one has a five-year warranty on it and has a life expectancy of 10 years. So, so two to three years, 10 years, 500 cycles, 4,000 cycles. So I, I think you're seeing where this math is coming from now. Another big difference between these two is size and weight. These are both 100 amp hour batteries. Uh, as you can see, their energy uh, comes in a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter, and definitely um, a lot narrower. They're about the same. They're pretty much the same width. Um, actually, they're identical in width. But so you get the... 100 amp hours, 100 amp hours, this is a smaller footprint. So if you're, you know, got a trailer, maybe got some tight spaces, that's a big consideration. Weight is a massive difference between these two batteries, more than double. So I've got a handy dandy little scale right here. Let's throw these on the scale and let, let's see what they actually weigh. All right, let's start with the lead acid battery. And it comes in at 62.2 pounds. That's a, that's a hefty, hefty battery. Reset. Now let's drop the Renogy on it. And it comes in at 23 pounds. So more than double the weight of the lead acid battery versus the lithium iron phosphate Renogy battery. That's pretty significant. I mean, I can get two of these weigh less than one of these. And that, that's, that's crazy. So. Uh, I, I'm saving weight, a significant amount of weight, by moving from two of these to two of these. Another significant advantage between these battery types is just technology. I mean, this is very old school. There is nothing built into this battery to protect it from things like over voltage, um, uh, over temperature, uh, those sort of things. This actually has what's called a BMS, a battery management system built into the battery. Uh, so this is, this is their, their smart battery. So this thing basically has a little computer inside of it that's monitoring all the parameters to keep this thing safe and protected and protect your electronics as well. So things like um, over voltage protection, temperature, discharge rate, all that sort of stuff is being monitored to the, by this. And if it gets in a situation where way too much current is being pushed into this thing, it'll shut it down and protect the battery. Or maybe you've got a, a, something that you've plugged into it that's drawing way too much power out of it. Again, this thing will shut it down and protect it. Um, the one drawback to a lithium iron phosphate battery is it is uh, fairly picky about 
temperature ranges. Now, heat is usually not a problem uh, with these, but they don't like being charged when it is below freezing. So below zero Celsius, below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, these things will get damaged if they are being charged below freezing. One of the perks that this little guy has on it is uh, it has self-heating functionality inside of it. It's got little warming cells in here. And so when this detects that the temperature is uh, below a certain threshold, which I think is around 40 degrees, 41 degrees, something like that, uh, this thing will kick on the, the little warming plates in here and make sure this stays at an optimum temperature for this to be charged. Um, so that is crazy cool technology that they are building into this. And they've also got uh, ports here that you can connect batteries together for communication purposes. Um, a Bluetooth module you can plug in here uh, so I can check on the battery status with just my phone and I'll be doing that. I have one of their Bluetooth modules. Um, I'll be doing that as I am installing these in our Conqueror and making sure uh, that, that I've got them both individually charged and, and leveled before wiring them in parallel to, to be ready to go in the Conqueror. So handy stuff there. You, know, you can't do that sort of thing with a lead acid battery. So let's get back to that price discrepancy because that's what I hear more than anything. When I you know, see people on the forums, Facebook groups, whatever, and people are asking about auxiliary batteries for their trailer, overlanding rig, whatever. Uh, I immediately see people jump in and balk. I could buy three of these for the price of one of these type of things. Well, let's break down the math. So this battery, like I said, costs $690. That's an expensive battery. Lots of cool technology built into this thing, but it's still not a cheap battery. It's also not the most expensive battery either. It's kind of in the middle for a good quality lithium iron phosphate battery. But $690 uh, for this. Lifespan of 4,000 cycles. So when you do the math and divide $690 by 4,000 cycles, you get 17 0.25 cents per cycle. 17 cents per cycle. That, that's, that's pretty good. Now, let's take this battery for example. It costs $290. Has an expected lifespan of 500 cycles. $290 divided by 500 cycles. 58 cents per cycle. So, 17 cents a cycle. 58 cents a cycle. So that puts this at almost three times the cost of, uh, of one of these if you, you know, average it out over time. Uh, so I, I think the argument about cost is, is really insignificant when you think about the long-term usage, how long, how much usage, how many years I'm gonna get out of this versus how many years I'm gonna get out of this. The fact that I can use 100% of this battery's rated 100 amp power, this one realistically only about 40 to 60% of the rated amp hour power out of this one. I mean, the math just screams that this is a much better investment and a much better battery for your trailer, for your, your Overland rig, for your, your, your van, uh, camper, whatever. Um, this is the much better investment and gets you much more usable power than your traditional lead acid AGM style battery. So that's why my project today is to take both of these batteries out and put two of these in. And I, I think my world is going to change radically when we're on our trips and being able to use all of this power, being able to check the, the status of the battery, uh, monitor all of its functions, uh, self-heating function. I, I think we're going to be in good shape long term because we're hitting the road in three years full time and we're going to be living out of our Conqueror. And so this is a much better solution uh, than, than this. So this app is pretty darn cool. This is the, the Bluetooth module right here plugged into the port. I'm only charging one battery at a time to level them. To 100% and then I will hook them up in parallel but the app is sweet so I started at 77% now I'm at 92 shows me I'm getting 18 amps pumped in from the charger in this thing 
13.7 volts, present capacity, 92 amp hours. Uh, I mean, update firmware, tells the temperature. This is sweet. Now on the main home screen, you just get an overview of your battery and then fully charged in 22 minutes. Um, I mean, that's just pretty cool. I like the I like the summary. And then you click into the battery and you get all the details. Super handy. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be sure and put them in the comments. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you've been considering you know, an aux battery for, for your rig or extra batteries for your, your trailer, uh, lithium iron phosphate is the way to go. I've actually got two 50 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries that are about to go in my wife's Wrangler. That'll be another project that's coming up soon that I'll, I'll document here on the channel how I did that, where I put them, all the parts I used to, to connect them together and get usable power in there for my wife's Wrangler so that she's not running things like fridges and heaters and charging things off of her starter battery when she's at camp. So it's going to be a big project. So be sure and hit the subscribe button uh, to get that and much more content that we've got coming up. Be sure and give the video a like. And if you like what we're doing and you want to support the channel, gain access to special content and events like our Patreon weekend that I did, uh, what, just a week or so ago. Uh, and gain access to all of our GPS data, uh, check out the Patreon link in the description. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching. Really hope this was helpful. See you next time. Bye.